I read eight, nine, nine books this month. Who am I? And like, can she stick around? <laughs> welcome or welcome back to my channel or if you're new here hi hello my name is Katie and in today's video I'm talking about all the books that I read in July so props to me give me props right now because I read nine books in July I'm waiting for the applause because look I never read that many books and plus I had COVID at the beginning so like I still banged out so many books. You know, I really don't know if there's ever a good time to say the word bang uh, and not have it sound a little strange, but I did. You know, I, I put, I, nine books. And most of those were on my Kindle, if not every, every single one, but two of them. And I'm gonna tell you a little secret. I found a page on Instagram called the Smut Hood Reviews. And I will leave it linked down below, but he, it's a group where you can click on like the little link tree, put in all your information and sign up to get ARCs or backlist books of indie romance authors. This is not sponsored. This is just how I read that many books because the books I'm going to talk about are not that well known. And most of these authors I had never heard of. So what I did was, you know, I did this back in April, I think, and I clicked on the link, put in, put in my information about like, what kind of romance I like, tropes, triggers, all that stuff. And then every once in a while you get an email saying we have a match for you and you click on it and it tells you the title of the book, it gives you a blurb of the book, it gives you the triggers, it gives you the tropes. And then you can decide if you want to sign up to receive an ARC or a backlist copy of it. And then sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. So just like kind of be prepared for like, okay, if I do get this book, I got to fit it in because you have two weeks from the time it gets sent. I think it's two or three weeks from the time it gets sent to you to read it and then review it. And then you give them your review link. And then you can sometimes win paperback or hardcover copies of the books that you review. So like I said, I'm not sponsored, but that is how I read a majority of these books because I got sent a whole bunch because I went through like a spree of just like signing up for every ARC <laughs> and backlist book that they sent me. So that's what happened. But if you're ever wondering, like, I've never heard of these books. I've never heard of this author. That's be that's where I get the majority of the, like, the unknown author books. So let's just get into the books that I read in July. Starting off with a bang. I gotta stop saying that word. I don't like it. Starting off with a good one. I read Twisted Love by Anna Huang. I love this book. Like, I, okay. So I'm, like, one of the only people who haven't read the series yet. So I started in July and it lived up to the hype. This book is about Ava and Alex and Alex is Ava's brother's best friend. Ava's brother is going out of the country and he's like, hey Alex, my sister is known to get into some trouble and I need you to keep an eye on her. And Alex is like, okay, I'll do it because you're my best friend. Well, Alex is grumpy, Ava is sunshine, and Ava just comes into his world and lights it up. I loved it. All the little things, like, because he was living beside her. He was living in his brother's house, and she lived beside him. And it was just so cute. Like, she would bring him red velvet cupcakes. They would have movie nights. It was amazing. I loved this book. And there's one scene in here that lives, like, rent-free in my head. And it's, like, the phone call scene. If you know, you know. But, like... I love that scene. I gave this five stars because I absolutely loved it. And but I'm still trying to, f I was writing my notes down this morning and I could not for the life of me remember why they broke up. And this could be because I read it like right after having COVID. So like my brain was still a little mushy, but I am seriously having issues about trying to remember why they broke up. Like I know what happened after they broke up. I know like there's a few time jumps at the end, but I cannot remember why they broke up. Maybe it's for the best, <laughs> but definitely, definitely love this book. I will definitely be continuing. I don't know when, because I already did my August TBR, but maybe if I'm in the mood, because you know I am a mood reader, I'll read book two. But yes, this one, definitely also just, he's also like a morally gray character. He like, he's not like Prince Charming, but 
He's also not a villain. So he's just kind of like in between. But love this book. Definitely worth the hype. If you have not read it yet, give it a chance and just read it. Neon Gods is over there. I forgot I read it. I don't feel like going to get it. Hold please. One day I will look at my list before I sit down to film and get all the books that I need. Okay. The second book that I read was Neon Gods by Katie Robert. Look, this has been on my TBR. For a good, I want to say how many videos, like five. And I'm like, I'm always going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I just never do it. I did it. And I loved it. This book is, if you don't know, it is a Hades and Persephone retelling. And it's set in modern time. So it's, you know, modern times now. I don't, I don't need to tell you. But Persephone is set to marry Zeus. Zeus is not the best guy. Like he's like the only time Zeus has ever been a good guy is when Disney did Hercules and made him out to be a family guy. Like that's the only time. This Zeus is a terrible man. Like he kills all his wives and he's just not good. So she's like, I really don't want to do this. Like I don't. So I'm running away and she runs away and she makes it over to the like bridge to like the lower part of the city. And she runs in literally into Hades' arms and Hades can get it like any day okay he will give her anything that she wants he's just that kind of man and there's this thing that Hades has in his house like everyone comes to his house for like this show okay it's like a show and they come in and like there's this throne in the back where he can sit and watch but there's like a stage in the room where people can watch can watch you know Find me a church. I've done everything everybody else wants to do. Find me a church. So that intrigues Persephone. Definitely intrigues her. But so yeah, like there's public displays of affection in this book. And when I mean public displays, I mean to the highest level. And I was here for it. So will I continue with this? Yes. I did give it four stars though. But I can't tell you why. Because it was just, to me, it wasn't like a five star book. But it was like a four, 4.5 stars, definitely. There was just something, I was just like, I don't know why I can't give this a five stars. And I can't tell you why I didn't give it a five stars because I'm not too sure. But like he, he, so protective of her. And I, I ate it up. I ate it up. The next book that I read was a novella and it is called Penalty Box by Echo Grace. And it's just a short to the point novella. It's what I needed. You're following Jackson and Savannah and it is a second chance romance. Savannah has been gone from the small town for a long time. She comes back. She's married. She has a child and he still loves like he is still all for her. Okay. And Savannah's not in the best situation. She has to get out of the marriage that she's in for reasons that to keep her and her daughter safe. So Jackson's like I'm going to make sure his name is Jackson real quick because if it's not, it is. Thank goodness. So Jackson's like protective of her and he will do anything to keep her safe. And look, the spicy scenes in this, I was here for it because I was like, we're not going to get any that early. Oh, but ma'am, we did. But ma'am, we did because it's a novella and we got them and I was pleasantly surprised with them. But do look up trigger warnings for this book because it does contain domestic violence and it does talk about it in the pages. So keep that in mind before you're going in. But if you're that, you know, that's not one of your triggers and you're looking for like a quick novella that was really good. I really enjoyed this book. Definitely check that one out. I gave it, I'm pretty sure I gave it a four stars. Did I? Did I? Hold your horses. I did. I gave it a four stars. So definitely enjoyed that one. The next book that I read was Out of Bounds by Claire Hastings and this is a sports romance and it is set around soccer and in this book you're following Gunner who is a coach of Phoenix Rising soccer team I think and you're following Felicity and Felicity is his boss like her family owns the whole soccer team so it is a workplace romance. It is an enemies to lovers kind of romance too, because Felicity is that, she's that girl. She's that boss, okay? She does not let people walk over her. She, she knows that she has to be that way in an industry kind of dominated by men 
for them to take her seriously. And it does have a lot about like glass ceiling and so much of this book made me angry. There is a character in this book who is so condescending to her and puts her down and thinks that she has no good ideas. And when she does have a good idea, he will steal it. And her father's like, oh my God, you had such a great idea. And I'm like, no, that was her idea. Like, pissed me off. But Gunner, <laughs> when they get together, Gunner is so protective of her, stands up for her, puts that guy in his place. And once he learns like why there's animosity between the guy and her, it's perfect. I love it. I just, I, I so resonated with Felicity because she was so focused on career. And it was like, you know, if she has a man, fine. If she doesn't, that's okay too. Like, cause she's focused on her career and I, how I kind of live my life. And it was just, I loved this book. It is the first in a series. Will I continue? I don't know, maybe. Because I did enjoy all like the side characters too. And they all have books. So possibly. But I ended up giving this, I think I gave it a 4 or 4.5. Hold please. Why can't I remember anything I do in my life? It was a 4 stars. But I really did enjoy this one. The next book that I read was Love Me Later by G. Calgrove. And I gave this one a 5 stars. This is a small town, best friends, to lovers romance and if you're new to my channel I'm not a fan of friends to lovers I just it's like the least of my favorite of my tropes I just I like the angst and it just if it doesn't have that I'm just like Ugh. but this one had it in this book you're following Jackson and Aurora and they have been friends since high school she moved into town they had to be like lab partners and they've just been best friends ever since. And it kind of does a little bit of flashbacks in between chapters. So you get like when they first meet, present day, so many years later, you know, uh, and they've just always been best friends. And Aurora is set to marry someone else. And he's supposed to be like the, the ma maid of honor, man of honor, you know. And he's just like, I can't do this. Like, I can't do this. And on the wedding day, I'm not gonna tell you what happens, but he does something and it changes the whole story. And from then on, they're like, okay, well, you know what, should I tell you? Is it a spoiler? I don't know, I'm not gonna tell you, but just know like th there's an HEA, so <laughs> take it as you will. Uh, but trigger warnings in this book for school shooting and infertility. The school shooting, no one gets no no one gets hurt so there's there's that but it is a sensitive topic i know so go in knowing that she is a guidance counselor at her school and he is the town cop so they're both involved you know in that scene um but i love i i loved this book and i don't i don't know like what it was i'm not a fan of friends to lovers like it's it's never been a thing but just the way that they communicated about well you know there's always some miscommunication it just blah, that's the only trope every romance writer knows how to write but they were able to talk about it because a lot of her insecurities was like he you you won't want to be with me because I can't give you children and that's I know how much you love children so it was just like a lot of overcoming that but I so enjoyed this book I loved this book so much and I gave it five stars and you won't see that very often with friends to lovers this one was the next book that I read was Fourth Wheel by Abby Millsaps. I gave this one a four stars and this one you're following Maddie and Dempsey. Maddie is home for the summer from college while her apartment gets like made up and Dempsey works at the town like bar called The Oak. Maddie's older brother used to be best friends with Dempsey's twin brother Fielding. They're not friends no more. Something happened, caused a rift and they don't speak. Well, Maddie, <laughs> goes into the bar one night sees Dempsey and she's like him me me want him and it's just an instant attraction he knows who she is and she he's like I cannot do this I cannot do this to my brother I'm not doing this but he cannot deny his his like attraction it's not insta love which I enjoyed but it's like instant chemistry which I'll take I do not like insta love but insta chemistry that I can do because it's not like they get together in the in the beginning and it's like together the rest of the book like he really struggles with his feelings for her because he wants to 
she wants to. He's like, no. She's like, I'm not taking no for an answer. And then finally, when they do get together, it's great. And I loved it. So, but there is the whole, oh, trigger warnings for alcoholism and substance use in the book. Just be forewarned. Um, but no, I really enjoyed this book. I, I'd never heard of the author. I never heard of the book and it was a good one. The next book is Savage Love by Nicole Green. I gave this one a four stars as well. This is a bodyguard romance. You're following Talon and Elle. Talon is in the, he's a Russian fighter, but he's like in the Bratva over there and he gets hired to be Elle's bodyguard. Elle is a no-nonsense kind of girl, okay? At the beginning of this book, she, <laughs> I'm laughing because it's funny. Her twin's ex-boyfriend posted a sex tape that he made of her. She gets pissed and takes his car, sets it on fire, and throws it over the cliff. Well, little does she know that his father is one of the leaders of the cartel, and there was a lot of money worth of drugs in that car. So now she is getting death threats. So she needs a bodyguard. Her dad hires Talon and his friend Alexi to come be bodyguards for the two sisters. But this girl, we're only following Elle and Talon in this story. And I loved it. She is like, I don't need you in my life. I can take care of myself. I don't need you. And he is, if you touch her, I will kill you persona like, to a T, literally. Like he, oh, he's got to go to college with her. He's got to sit in the classes, and he's always like eyeballing everybody. Like you, do not look at her. Do not look at her. And I loved it. I'm here for the protective hero. I'm here for the angst. I loved this book. I loved this book. I didn't think I would, but I actually really loved this book. The only thing is, the only thing is, the man on the cover, the man on the cover, does not look like the man described in the book. Like, I'm all for this man on the cover. I think he's beautiful. But the man in the book has got darker hair. So I just, <laughs> so, just a little pet peeve of me. But I was just like, I needed to, but it's okay. That, that's beside the point. Uh, the next book, <laughs> okay, look. The next book that I read changed my life. It changed my life. I read A Love Letter to Whiskey by Candy Steiner. I, this is like a six star book. I don't give six stars, but if I did, this would get it. This is a best friends to lovers as well. And you know, I just said it, like it's not my trope, but this book is my everything. In this book, you are following Jamie and B. B meets Jamie when she is a junior in high school and he is a senior and she literally bumps into him. Like literally, she's running with her best friend, Jenna. She turns around, she turns back around, boom, bang, bomb, meet cute happens she's like awestruck he's beautiful jenna comes walking up mind you jenna is blonde a cheerleader everything that b isn't so jamie automatically has eyes for jenna but she's like but i saw him first b's like i saw him first and so they become friends because of jenna and but there's always something there there's always the look the way Candy Steiner describes Jamie's staring at B made me blush. Like, I'm like, sir, why are you staring at her like that? Like, it just made me feel things. And then you have, you have a third character in the story named Fate and Timing. And that, it's the villain, okay? It just sits there and laughs at you like the whole time. You're like, oh, you think they're getting together? <laughs> no, let me piss you off. Oh, you think they're getting together? <laughs> no, let me make you cry. Now listen, if I don't read a book and if I don't get this reaction. Hey, wait. Are you? Wait, I can't do this. What are you what do you mean? They got married. What do you mean? Oh my god. Oh my god. They got together. They're together. They got married. They, they got together? Yeah. They're together. 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 Yeah. They
nose to her. <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want it. This is going to be my favorite book of the year. No doubt about it. There is nothing that's going to make me feel the things that I felt while reading this book. And that's what makes a favorite book of the year for me. It's not how well it was written or anything like that. It's how I feel while reading the book. And so far, nothing has elicited that type of reaction to me or from me this year than this. Am I continuing with her backlist? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Am I going to bug her on Instagram? anytime I can. Yes. She's been very gracious to answer all my messages. And she's a sweetheart. So like, honestly, but I love this book. Oh my God, do I love this book. And then the last book that I read for the month of July, I'm going out with a bang. And I want to say that I can say that because this book has its bang moments. And that is Praise by Sarah Kate. I read it y'all. And I can see why the hype is real. Daddy Emerson can get it any day. Any, any day. <sighs> Calm down a little bit. You don't know me. I got a thing about ex-boyfriend's fathers. Not in real life because I don't got one. But in books. I love it. I don't know what it is. But I love it. In this book, you're following Charlie. And Charlie just broke up with Bo. Who was a real pain. Like, I, I know he's getting his own book in the series. So, like. Okay, but in this book, he was just like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so they break up. They had put in a deposit for the apartment they were living in. And since the dad was the co-signer, he got the money. She's got to go to his house to get her half of the money. Now, Daddy Emerson is, he's a kinky man. Okay, he's got his kinks. And we're not shaming him for that. One of his things is he has secretaries, okay, that aren't really secretaries. They are, but they're not, okay? They, they're they more like submissives, you know? And he mistakes her for one of the secretaries coming to, like, get the job. So she's just, you know, she, and she kind of looks like she'd be a secretary because she's wearing, like, a pencil skirt and all that, which I thought was a strange, but anyway. And so he's, like, on your knees, and she's like, excuse me? Pardon me? <laughs> Did I hear that right? And he's like, do you want your money? Get on your knees. And she's like, well, that's the strangest thing I've ever heard, but I do need the money. So she gets on her knees and it just, you come to, he finds out that I, you, I am just here for the money from the check from the state. I need my deposit back, sir. And he's like, I am so sorry to get that. And it just kind of goes from there. Like he gives her a job as a secretary, just a secretary. And she starts being like, you know what? Daddy Emerson's not that bad looking. You know, and she gets curious about what he does for a living because he owns the Salacious Players Club, which is a sex club in the city, but it's members only. It's very exclusive. And she gets, she gets, you know, intrigued. So she starts looking things up on her own and then he starts explaining things to her and then they start experimenting with the males. And it's just a great book. I loved it. I love this book. And I, I am definitely going to continue on with the next book and then the next one and the next one. And that's all for a while. So there's only going to be four. But this one was a five star read. Absolutely loved it. And now I know why everyone does and the hype is real. And Daddy Emerson is for me. Those are the books that I read for the month of July. Let me know down below. What did you read or what was your favorite read of the month? I would love to know. Or if you've read any of these, I would love to know your thoughts down below as well. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new. I would love for you to stick around and join the family, but I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys. Did my foot stay awake this whole time? Move it. I can move it. Oh, hot dog. It's a good day. I, my feet did not fall asleep. Good enough. I hate thumbnails. Okay. The next book that I read was a novella and it's called Pendle. Pe 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 <laughs> sure it is. Pa -pa -pa. It's called Pa -pa -pa -pa. Stupid. The next book that I read was Love Me Later by C. Call not C. Callgrove. Is it C. Callgrove or B. Callgrove? What's the love of me? G. Callgrove. I was wrong completely. Okay. This one had it because this was following Jackson. Oh, what's, his, what's her name? It's following, it's Aurora, right? For the life of me. I don't even know what I'm saying right now. The words are escaping me.